Having done one painting tutorial on the armor clad iron breakers, I thought I'd look at skin and faces in particular using this much beloved sculpt of a dwarfed lord with great weapon. Our first step is a simple base coat with Bugman's Glow. This is quite a warm red pinky sort of skin colour, which as the name suggests really works for the kind of ruddy face complexion of most of the dwarves in fantasy. So I'm going to very carefully line in around all the other base coats that I've already applied to other parts of the figure. If at any point while I'm painting this you wonder how I've done any of the metals or the cloths or other things like that, which you'll see kind of progressing between each step of the skin. I have a full length video going through all of those techniques on an iron breaker, exactly the same on there as they are on this King model, which I will link above this video now for you. Here we have our base coats done. This is where the method starts to diverge from how I approach my iron breakers and other line troops in the army. The next step you'll see is once I've applied washes to the rest of the model and started doing some layers on those. Um, and unlike the iron breaker, where I just did everything with agrax, I'll be using different washes for different areas of the model. So here's the figure with the washes applied to the rest of the model and everything else painted up, leaving just the skin and face to finish off. So, first thing I'm going to do is eyes. You kind of want to work in a way that reduces the chance of you messing up something you spend time on. So, in doing the eyes first, I'm then kind of able to work on the cheeks and other areas without risking smudging something on it when I'm trying to poke a brush in to get you know these tiny parts up here. I'm not sure how well this is going to come across on camera because it's quite an awkward position to hold this in and paint the eyes and be on camera at the same time, but we'll give it a go. So I'm going to start off with a almost white, Ulthu and Grey, and just using the very tip of the brush, I'm going to try and move in the same direction as the eye, so this way across the face. Um, leaving uh, an eyeball like this. Any darkness that you see around the eye at the moment is just very slight overspill from the sepia wash that I used on the eyebrows. Um, that's the same wash that I applied to the beard and hair and everything else. It was just a sepia wash and then very um, directed uh, agrax into those deeper recesses and then those were reinforced with um, Steel Legion Drab and Thondria Brown. And then the next step with eyes is to do the pupil. For this I'll be using Abaddon Black. So whereas I went across this way for the, the whites of the eyes, I'm going to be going perpendicular to it. So again, just very small movements. If you do this correctly, you are going to avoid catching anything else, but I've very, very rarely managed that. So you'll see I've got the whites on both sides and the pupil, but then I've also caught down onto the lower eyelid and the top of the cheek. So I will I will neaten that up later, but that's not an issue at this point. So where you've got that overspill, I'm just going to go in with the Bugman's Glow again, our base coat colour. We'll try and bring that level back up again. Yeah. There we go. So that's neatened up that eye on that side. With the eyes reading roughly as eyes from the sort of distance this is going to be viewed at, next I'm going to start bringing some more reds into the cheeks. Um, just obviously around this eye area here. And possibly up around this strand of hair as well, just to introduce some more variety on the face. And I'll be doing that mixing a little bit of Mephiston Red with Art Bugman's Glow. I'm going to start reinforcing those areas just around 
DI here. You see, that's just bringing this kind of red tint in there. It will look more aggressive to start off with and it will end up. Obviously, as we start layering on top of this with the other brighter skin tones, that will take some of this away again. Okay, this is obviously quite exaggerated at this point, but next step, we're going to darken some of those shadows further still. And this I'm going to be using a mix of Thondia Brown with our base skin tone. So just here around his nose. The same on this side. So those are our kind of darkest shades. So I've just added this Sondia Brown around the hand as well, especially where the ring joins this central finger into the deepest recesses on his elbow here. And this side and this hand as well. Okay, next we start pushing the highlights up around these recesses. Beginning with, again, our base coat. This time it's going to be more of a glaze, so a slightly watered down mix of our colour. And pushing from darker points towards lighter ones, leaving the recesses where they were. This is a fact the kind of process that a shade does as a shortcut or a wash as they call them but by using actual paints and mixing our own things with our base coat incorporated into it we can be a lot more specific about both the location of where we apply those recesses and the exact tones or colours we get in them rather than the kind of spray and pray method with agrax or something so we're back up to our neutral base tone now with Bugman's. So I'm going to begin with mixing bits of Cadian Flesh Tone into Bugman's. You can see the kind of difference in the tone. This one's a lot pinker. Um, rather than going straight in with this one, which would leave a bit of a harsh contrast. So this is our first blend, and this is going to go on to larger, flatter areas that we want to raise the tone of. So a smaller area on the inside of the cheek for instance. The same on this side. And the lobe of the nostril as well. And this large area up here of forehead. So we're one stage brighter now I'm going to go in with a very thin glaze of Bugman's Glow, so a lot of water compared to the paint, just over those areas on the face to try and bring these colours closer together. Because again, this contrast up area is a little too stark for my liking, so you'll see the effect this will have on it, where it just brings everything back to sort of common tone between them. So here's the effect of that glaze. You'll see it's just pushed the shadows a bit nearer to the overall colour of the face. Next we continue with our highlights. Pure Cadian flesh tone this time. And so this will start to become more of an edge highlight at this point. So the top of the ridge. These parts here. And for our final highlight, I'm going to be bringing in a small amount of Kislev Flesh with the Cadian Flesh Tone. Again, mixing a small amount in and increasing that ratio as I get towards the sharpest highlight. So these will just be on little tiny areas like this brow line. Cheekbones. The tips of the ears. And that's all there is to it. With that same approach applied to same highlights on his hands and arms and so on, that's the finished model. 
in total it's taken probably about three quarters of an hour to an hour on just the skin which you know for a character model is about fair um certainly to this level which i think you know a high tabletop standard if i can call it that rather than a display model per se with the basing all finished it looks like this i will talk a little more in future about the actual techniques i've used on the bases because they you know, are fairly important in elevating a character like this both literally and figuratively above the line troops around him i was working on several characters basing them up in the same way when i did this one so i've got a few clips from those i can upload with some commentary as well but there we are. I hope some of the techniques I've shown here are useful to you in whatever sort of project you're working on. I always try and make these videos as kind of theorising and approaches to painting rather than giving too specific instructions and recipes and so on. Because I don't find that overly helpful myself when I was learning. But there we go. Good luck with anything you're working on at the moment. And until next time.